grateful. I am so honored to be in your midst tonight. I stand here tonight not as a guest, but I am home. Tonight I am not responding to a speaking engagement. I believe with all of my heart I am standing in destiny tonight. And I believe that it is destiny for all of us. For that reason, I'd like to give honor to my son and my daughter. I know many people in Africa, it is a saying that they call you mommy, but he is really my son. Put your hands together. For Pastor Witness and his wife. Come on, you can do better than that. I am, I am honored to be in this building and I give honor to my pastors who are watching by way of social media, Dr. Shamari, and co-pastor Jackie White from the Have a Life Church of Charlotte, North Carolina. Why don't you give them a good God bless you? Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Yeah, they permitted me to come. And I'd like to give a special thanks to Bishop Carolyn Showell, who were a part of my journey you may not know who she is, but you would bless me if you would put your hands together for her tonight. And we give honor to our house prophet in Charlotte, North Carolina. Dr. Valerie Moore is with us. Put your hands together for her. And to all of the pastors and the people of God that are represented in this place tonight, I believe that God is going to speak something that is going to transform every last one of us. I did not come to preach to you. I came to hear from God for all of us. And I'm not going to miss my deposit either. And you need to turn around to three people and tell them you better not miss your deposit because we are standing in a Kairos moment. Oh, don't touch nobody dead. Don't touch nobody dead. Don't touch nobody dead. Touch somebody that feel it the way you feel it. And then open up your mouth and give God a praise in this place. That was okay for now. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Like oil upon your feet my praise is like wine for you to drink. It's like water from my heart. I pour my love on you. And if
My love for you is like oil upon your feet. And my praise is like wine for you to drink. It's like water from my heart. I pour my love on you.
I don't know about y'all. Until there's nothing left. I don't know about y'all. But until there's nothing left. Jesus. 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 I'll praise you with all of my heart. I'll praise you with all of my heart. Until there's nothing left. Jesus, Jesus, until there's nothing left. <laughs> my God, my God, my God. I'll praise him with all of my heart, with all of my strength, and all of my mind. I will, I will. Hey, until there's nothing left. The one thing I don't understand is that you're standing next to somebody that the devil thought you wasn't going to make it. He tried to take your life. He tried to take your destiny. If I were you,
up your mouth and give God a praise. I said, give it to God, not to me. You may be seated in his presence. a word from the Lord this is a word that I will say to you tonight that it has taken me 15 years to hear from the Lord for this very night you are in this building. You have been chosen by God to win at everything you touch. I'm going to say that over here because somebody over there didn't get what I just said. I said if you are in this building, you have been chosen to win at everything you touch. You better praise God like you already got it. Hold the music for a moment. Hold the music for a moment. I'm going to say that again, and I want to hear, I want to hear you make the noise for the Lord. Because when God do this for you, before the year is out, you won't have a pianist 
You won't have an organ. Now open up your mouth and give God a praise like you believe it. You're watching my television, you better give God a praise like you believe it. The book of Deuteronomy 29 and 29 in the NIV Bible says, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may follow all the words of this law. When we begin to understand that the spirit realm is not just a spirit that is swinging around like a free agent. The spirit realm is moving according to the law of its spirit. Matthew 13 and 52, I have to read these scriptures. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher and interpreter of the sacred writings who has been instructed about and trained for the kingdom of heaven and has become a disciple is like a householder who brings forth out of his storehouse treasure that is new and treasure that is old the fresh as well as the familiar. Why did I read that scripture? I read that scripture because there are some things we're going to hear in this meeting that is going to be familiar to you. And there will be some things that won't be familiar to you. Because in this very moment, for 15 years, I have lived for this very moment because there will be a transitioning and a paradigm shift in the kingdom from this very building. I'm not getting anybody to understand what I just said. Family members in other countries, family members all over Africa will be transitioned by what God is about to say in this place tonight. You are about to become a carrier of a profound message that will resound until Jesus returns. This is not just another church service. This is not just another conference. But this is when the Lord will turn the earth on its axle. This is when change will begin to take place in the universe. I don't think somebody is hearing me because I don't think that you believe it. This is that moment that we have been waiting for. That the spirit of the Lord will blanket the universe universe and revival will hit the universe from this very moment in time. Hmm. And you will understand that what I have just spoken is profound and true. Isaiah 1, 6, from the sole of the foot, even to the head, there is no soundness of health. I got to find who I'm preaching to tonight. I think I done found two ladies right there. Lady in the pink and the lady in the green. My God. There is no soundness of health in the nation's body, but wounds and bruises and fresh and bleeding stripes. They have not been pressed out and closed up or bound up or softened with oil. No one has troubled to seek a remedy. The move of God 
in this hour across the world and especially in America it has been lost in translation it's like when I was in grade school in kindergarten that I remember I know that's a very long time ago I'm 65 years old and when I was in kindergarten my teacher spoke a word and by the time it got around the whole classroom it was none of what she said because somewhere along the line somebody had a listening problem and so what was to be expressed was lost in translation how do I know that because churches are dying and doors are closing and people are falling away and preachers are drained and quitting the word is stale and stolen the clouds have no rain there is wind with no power in it there's spiritual famine there is drought fame has eaten up the pulpit and drained us of our faith what we used to get in prayer we're now getting from the computer and AI we are seeing several people that we knew that carried the ancient oil they are either gone with God or have walked away from God declaring that God is not real the people in the pews are fearful suffering lack sickness and depression oppression and confusion they're confused about their identity they don't know whether or not I should call myself a Christian as a matter of fact I don't even know what it is anymore because there's so many translations of what Christianity is because it has moved away from the laws of the Word of God and now people are changing the meaning of the word saved so that it can accommodate their sin but God forbid our belief system has gone down the drain anxiety is in this room anxiety is all over this room when we get finished pretending like we're praising God when we get through pretending like we got joy when we get in our cars we are about to lose our mind when we get home we can't seem to take this presence to our homes and the enemy torments us on our bed and I know that I'm preaching the truth right now because anxiety is a demon but let me tell you what it is also anxiety is caused by the brain's inability to find something to believe somebody better say something right there I said anxiety is caused by the brain having the inability to find something that it believes in not only is it that but it's not just how you think it is the inability to control how you think when I was going through my transition and I call it a transition because it wasn't trouble because the true definition of trouble it's when you find something that is out of order and you're being given an opportunity to put it back in order and when I was going through my transition I said to the Lord what is this all about what is this all about I had lost everything I had lost friends I lost seven houses seven cars I lost a 50 million dollar estate I went down to nothing I didn't even have gas in my house I was cold and I had to burn the fireplace with newspapers to keep warm you don't want to hear me and I asked the Lord why am I going this way he said because there's going to come a time that there's going to be something that's going to hit the world he said I chose you for this trial because I know that I can depend on you to come through it and when you come through it you're going to have a remedy when you come through it you are going to have the answer I'm not hearing nobody talk to me I'm here to tell you tonight that your life is not over and everything that has ever blocked your life everything that has ever blocked your destiny I have the authority tonight to break it in the name of Jesus somebody better open up your mouth and give God a shout if he talking to you
During that season, I remember being in my prayer room. And I remember taking what I called Holy Ghost baths. I would put anointing oil in the tub and I would take a bath. I remember putting on my white dress. I remember praying and walking the floor. And this is going to surprise some of you. But I remember praying and nothing happened. Okay, I'm, I just want to see the, and nothing happened, people. Uh, I just want to see the people that would tell the truth and say, I've been, I've been, I've been praying, but, 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 nothing, nothing is happening. I fasted and nothing happened. God, I hear the Holy Ghost right now. I, I travailed and nothing happened. And as a matter of fact, I found myself becoming offended because I was wondering when was somebody going to come and help me? I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. I'm not hearing. But see, I found out that the people that I was depending on to come and help me, they needed help themselves. I'm not hearing y'all. And God had to speak another word to me. He had to show me something that was profound. Something that will cause me never to shake again. Faces don't move me. Gossip don't move me. Blogs don't move me. Because when you have had an experience with God and you have gone in the cave of Abdullah and you have met face to face with God you are not shaking by the lies of Satan. You are not shaking you are not shaking by what people think because you stand on a sure foundation which is the word of God and the word from God if I'm talking to you you better give God a shout right there so he said my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. For the lack of knowledge. I'm getting ready to inform you about something here in Africa. So he, the day that I put on my robe and, and this day I was travailing, and he said, stop. I said, okay. After y'all pass that water out, nobody else ain't gonna need no water. Because I don't want to be interrupted by water. Because we, we need to drink another water. I'm not getting nobody to say nothing. Because the church is dry. I said, we need to drink another water. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I said, we dry and we need to drink another water. God, our Lord Jesus, I, I can't get ahead of myself. I can't get ahead of myself because that's what's wrong with us now. We done lost our ability to cry out to God. We done lost our ability to get ugly before God. Listen, long before they let us wear lashes and makeup and hair extensions and all of that before we had jobs. I'm not hearing y'all. We had a praise in our heart. We would praise God until we would be sweating from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. But as soon as God give you a a little something now you're giving God some little cute churchy praise but I'm here to tell you that God is getting ready to turn Africa upside down I'm here to tell you that a fire is about to drop on the continent of Africa and it will never be the same if you sit next to somebody that ain't shouting ask them what's wrong with you and then turn around and say oh excuse me I already know Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Oh, Jesus. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. That's why he said, I want you, I want you to study. So I went back to school 
And he said, I want you to study the brain. I said, what? He said, study the brain. I didn't understand why he was asking me to do that. And the first time I heard it, because I was being reacquainted with the voice of God outside of the voice of man. He said, if you don't study the brain, you won't make it. I said, well, wait a minute. I'm fasting, I'm praying, I'm seeking you. He said, I said, if you don't study the brain, you won't make it. I said, well, what does that have to do? Here it is. What does that have to do with the Holy Ghost? What does that have to do? With the power of God, my God, what does that have to do with the moving of the spirit? He said to me, what I'm trying to deliver you from is a false faith. I'm trying to deliver you from the faith of your emotions that need to be fed like a slot machine in order for it to work. God, I'm talking to somebody. He said, what I'm trying to do is deliver you from a false dependency on people to encourage you. I'm trying to give you stability. I'm trying to set your face like a flint so that you would be confident in not only in who you believe, but you would be confident as to how this thing is supposed to work in you. I'm not hearing y'all. That you would be confident in not only how it's supposed to work in you, but how you can avoid and come back what would try to come against what I have said about you. I'm not hearing y'all. Y'all better say something right there. I said, okay, God. Okay. Okay, so talk to me. So talk to me. Talk to me. He said, because what we need is a paradigm shift. A paradigm is a type. And a paradigm is a model. A, 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 a paradigm is, is, is a system. Now, we have a model because we know how to shout. We have a model because we can, we can record face, uh, Facebook break, praise breaks. And so I'm asking everybody tonight to please put your phone down. Because your phone is going to catch something your spirit is going to miss. Because that is a spirit that have gone out through the body of Christ. That's got you sitting in church. And instead of you being concerned about your soul, you're trying to catch something. So that you can win some numbers. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me, but I'm hearing, I'm hearing the Lord say it, that he brought you in here because because you are in this building, your family is going to change. Your finances is going to change. And no, this ain't about an offering because I won't be raising one tonight. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Who am I talking to? No, God don't want your money. He wants you. I'm not hearing y'all. He don't want your check. He wants you. He don't want your cash app tonight. He wants you. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right there <laughs> a type I know what it is but I don't know how it works I have the form of godliness. Here it is. But I'm denying the power thereof. How am I doing that? Because power is not Lord give me power. Power is not for the asking. I'm not hearing you. Because you cannot get power until you get pressure and if you can't handle pressure you would never have power let me help you with something you can determine tonight how much power you got based upon how much pressure you have been under i'm not hearing y'all i'm not hearing y'all that's your real power if you have walked through hell and back if you have gone through something that others should have lost their mind you better get up and praise god because you are a person that the devil is afraid of because you got power I 
I don't want to mess us up. I don't want to mess us up. But I want us, I want us to say this. I want us to say this. Satan, you better back up because I got power. No, 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 you don't. Come on here. I want you to open your mouth up. And I want you to take a step back and say, Satan, you better get away from me because I know I got power. Because I have endured the pressure. I endured hardship as a good soldier. I went through the fire. I went through the flood. I went through the valley. And I came out. What should have killed me? I lived. Turn around and tell three people I lived. You're telling the wrong person. Look at somebody that you believe know what you're talking about and say to them, I can't give you my whole testimony, but trust me when I tell you I lived. When I should have died. Okay. I lived when I should have died. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. Yeah, tell them I didn't just live, but I lived through it. Here by Shia. Tell them I lived through it. I lived through it. I went through it. I went through it. Y'all, y'all sit down. Let me, let me, let me get to the, let me get to this. Hmm. So, so how do I come out? How do I, how do I get to the secret of our Savior? How do I get to it? Because Proverbs 29 and 18 says, listen at this. One of the most profound scriptures I have ever read. Where there is no vision, no redemptive revelation of God, the people perish. But he who keeps the law of God, which includes that a man blessed, happy, fortunate, and enviable is he. What am I saying? Where there is no redemptive revelation, where there is no revelation, that can buy you out of where you are. You will perish. So I, so I bring us to this close tonight. Because the Lord told me to pace myself. I have a long way to go. Why am I here in Africa? Why has the Lord so fit to bring me here for such a time as this. Because the paradigm shift, the paradigm shift, it is about world view. It is about what God is doing in the universe and how God is moving. So I began to pray. And I began to ask the Lord, why this moment? Why now? Why now? Why now? So he gives me this. And prior to my transition, I was the people's prophet. After my transition, I am God's prophet. And I say what he wants me to say. I'm not hearing y'all. And I do what he wants me to do. And I have set my face like a flint. And I will speak the word of the Lord to Africa. He said that the paradigm shift for this continent. He said Africans. Africans have forgotten they are African. Africans are trying to become American. A I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Africans have forgotten who they are and their responsibility and their purpose is being lost in translation. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. I didn't think that you would. I said, what are you trying to say to me, God? 
He said, I want you to look at something. And I began to pray. And he said, I want you to look up Africa. And I looked up Africa. And he said to me, look at the continent of Africa. I looked at the continent of Africa. I looked at the fact that the longitude and the latitude of Africa, that Africa is the only continent that sits in all four hemispheres of the universe. Africa is the only continent in the world that sits in all four, four hemispheres of the world. He said meaning that when Africa began to lose its prayer life, when Africa began to lose its anointing, the rest of the world will suffer. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I wish I had somebody to talk to me. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Let me come down off of this stage. He said Africa, Africa got to get back to being Africa. Africa got to get back to praying the way they used to pray. Africa got to get back to fasting the way they used to fast. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. He said, your identity is being lost in translation. You are not American. You are African. I'm not hearing nobody. I can tell. I can tell that you're being bamboozled. I can tell, put your phone down, sir. Put your phone down. I can tell that you're being bamboozled because the first time I went to Africa and I said, praise the Lord, it felt like the roof was coming off. Now you say, praise the Lord. You praising God like you're doing God a favor. But what I'm here to tell you is God sent me here as a prophet to tell you that I'm about to reign on Africa again. I'm about, oh, you don't hear me. The power of God, it's about to come up in your belly. You better open up your mouth. Wait a minute. 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 Let me see something. Let me see something. Let me hear who I'm talking to. I didn't say holler. I said shout when you back off of me when you shout you're thinking about where he brought you from you're thinking about where you want him to take you you better open up your mouth you're shouting for your children you're oh my god you're shouting for your future somebody shout somebody shout somebody shout Somebody shout. Somebody shout. Shout. Until we get up. You got your arms folded. I said lift your hands up. Shout. 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 Shout until they break it. Shout until he revive you. Shout until he break you. Shout. Listen, let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. I got to help you with this. I got to help you with this. I got to help you with this. I'm walking through here. And I'm looking at some of y'all. And I'm saying shout. Praise God. This is some of y'all. He didn't ask you to rock the baby. He didn't ask you to rock the baby. When you shout, you are reviving Africa.
when you revive Africa, the world is feeling your praise. Shout! is over not when the devil is trying to knock your head off I said that season is over that little sophisticated praise that season is over it's time for war it's time for war serve notice let me serve notice let me serve notice you are not going to rob me of my breakthrough from Africa I'm not gonna let you I'm not hearing nobody in here you are not gonna rob me from what I plan to take back home so you can open up your mouth for the next 30 seconds and praise God until the Lord returns your true identity you are African somebody praise him now
I'm going to hear you come. I can hear you. I can hear you. Come on through. I can hear you. Come on through. I can hear you. reading on the plane and I read I read that the church was moving the tabernacle was moving the cloud was over the people and I read that Miriam had a messed up spirit and one woman caused the cloud to lift and caused the church to stop moving. And I say that to say this before I walk off of this platform. You better turn around to your neighbor and say do not stop the cloud from hanging over Africa because God has sent his prophet and I didn't come for no other reason but to deliver what God said tell them you can stop the glory of God you can stop God from moving with your religious praise now the next time I say give God a praise you better praise him like you need something you better praise him like you gotta have God you better praise him like you desperate now give God a praise right now 